thank you everyone for being here. And um, I hope that you enjoy the, the talking uh, as much as you're enjoying your food. And um, this is the topic. Um, I guess it's a nice topic uh, right now because uh, uh, we are talking about uh, the two countries that are the, the largest countries in Latin America and the, the ones that right now are going through uh, incredible difficult times. And um, I tried to make sense, I was trying to make sense uh, how these countries uh, uh, at the Keiako were in the, you know, consider the, the, the best example from emerging countries for the whole world, how an emerging country is able to manage to handle and overcome many difficulties in, uh, in, um, in uh, get, getting through and uh, uh, improving, they say, many situations in economics, political, social terms, and um, in becoming modern, modern economics. And this is my agenda. And uh, first I'm going to do a brief uh, um, account of, this, of the current situation of these countries, going first uh, a little back. And um, I'm going to discuss what I call legacies in economical, uh, social, and um, somehow political terms, what I call uh, yo-yo economies. This is my definition. I'm going to show what I, what I mean for yo-yo economies and um, the impact of uh, poverty and inequality. And this, this, which is a big issue, that, that chronic capitalism in Latin America, as well as is in many countries as uh, and um, I'm going to write this question. Can industrial and labor institutions make the difference? We say yes, uh, but this is a good moment to figure out if this is hold true or under which condition is able to hold true and what need to do to, um, to keep it uh, true. And my thesis is this, um, there is this, uh, 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 legacy of interactions. But legacies could be, could be either way. Legacies could be an, a positive impact and could be a negative impact. A legacy is not only an additive factor, but a multiply factor. When you put different conditions, it's, it's not only that you are adding one condition more. In one point, they can interact and have this uh, big and greater impact that you expect. And I think this is what is going on in uh, Mexico and Brazil. Okay, from heaven to hell. And you remember this, right? Uh, no long ago, Lula was the example, even a uh, I was mesmerized that Obama says in one point, the most popular politician in the world is my, is my man, say Obama. And um, yes, and Le Monde and Time say it's, it's the man of the year. And in one point, when we were talking about BRICS, the, the best example of BRICS was uh, beyond China, Brazil. And Brazil, uh, representing this approach to development and internal market, growing uh, labor, growing income, and you name it. Um, and they call this, uh, this uh, social contract, the new social contract. Lula represents this social contract. And, and, and this is true uh, during the, 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 the two uh, uh, periods in office of Lula, they grow this uh, four percent a year in average, which is in the Latin American context. I'm going to show you later. Is quite good, even beyond the Latin American context. Uh, 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 this quite this was quite uh, important, 
um, even in one part, they say breaks are the contents that they are accounting in, um, in pulling up the whole world economy uh, regarding that this uh, uh, exhaustion of uh, mature economies. And when you put ones that you put China, India, Brazil, and Russia, and um, you control for the rest of variables, you were able to see how these uh, four countries were dragging entire regions. Uh, in the case of Brazil, it was uh, making all the difference in South America, especially South America, right? And um, it was many things. Um, the program Zero Form and uh, Bolsa Familia, for instance, was uh, picked as an example for United Nations to uh, uh, attack poverty and introduce uh, better situations in uh, extreme, extreme uh, poor people and so on. Later on, and right now even, we are learning what it was uh, that, that kind of formula to achieve all of this. And we know that it was quite important, subsidize and credit and uh, the stimulus to consumption and uh, yes, in, in, in a point in history where the price of commodities were, were going up, right? So again, Watching this and uh, uh, assessing this from the perspective of the auto industry, we can see it um, uh, in how Brazil was moving from, uh, yeah, it was more than important in production. Brazil was taking a place in the whole uh, worldwide industry in terms of sales. It, it implies internal market. And again, in the Latin American context, this comes a lot. Even in one point, they say that Brazil was going to take the, the very soon the place of uh, not only UK, but India. In, uh, it was expected that by uh, 2020, uh, Brazil uh, could become the fourth largest market worldwide, which is Telling a lot, you know? <coughs> and this is the situation right now. This, uh, th this assessment is, uh, it just appeared a week ago. In the World Bank say, the worst economy in Latin America is Brazil. The worst. And um, yeah, and they are, uh, 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 again, uh, um, all kind of numbers and figures to discuss and evaluate this. Uh, but um, only Argentina and Venezuela compare with Brazil in worse terms, right? And, um, and it's not only this at this moment, this has been the situation for the last two years, and it's expected that it's going to remain the situation in the, uh, in the next uh, one, two years. Right, and um, and exactly the same variables that you put in the past, and say they are that virtue or they are the factors accounting for the difference. Right now, they are the variables accounting for the problems. Credit, right, and um, is uh, and, and and of course uh, the political tensions that are growing in keeping growing every day. I'm gonna talk a little more about that uh, later on. Um, keep in mind this last uh, figure of productivity. This figure was the figure that was uh, during the last decade, whereas uh, income was growing and, uh, and uh, GDP was growing about four, three, four percent. Productivity in the best scenario get this um, amount. In Mexico, you know, uh, 
five years ago or so, Mexico was a, the, the, the big issue. And, uh, and it comes the Pacto for Mexico. And the Pacto for Mexico it, it, representing this uh, Peña Nieto and everybody forget where, who was Peña Nieto and how uh, he got office and uh, all his staff. And suddenly it was the best example. It, it was not any longer Lula, it was Peña Nieto. And they called the Mexican moment and they put all this uh, uh, reform package, including everything that you want. Energy, uh, competitiveness, uh, telecommunications, fiscal, education, social security, transparency, all, all that you can figure out. In. And they start to play with the, the big numbers, okay? Mexico is, uh, is uh, getting a uh, higher rates in the world economy, it's the 12th economy in uh, worldwide and so on. And they, they underscore this kind of Mexican approach as important for the rest of the world. You say the Mexican way and the Mexican approach is signing free trade agreements with everyone. No country in the world has the amount of, uh, and this is true, this is a matter of fact. And uh, it, again, it, uh, seeing from the car industry, if you put a car in Mexico, uh, uh, and, and produce and manufacture a car in Mexico, you can put it anyway in Europe, um, and just for the, for the uh, agreement with Europe, uh, they say, you name it, uh, depending of the car, uh, 1,000, 2,000, which in the car industry is a lot of money, you know, for, for needs, right? And, um, and say in Mexico, yes, we are free trade agreement. And we represent free trade for the war and, and, um, and all this stuff. And, you know, in the relationship with the U.S. was growing in importance. And, and you, get it, you, you can put it that way. Every single minute, there are one million trade between Mexico and the U.S. And of course, Mexico, Mexico become the, 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 the best example for NAFTA. And they say, we are showing for the rest of the global world that uh, how a macro region can integrate, make interdependencies and all this uh, stuff. In the car industry, which is again my, my um, where I am a specialist, I, I, I start to hear this. Uh, I had the opportunity to, to interact with uh, labor and management representatives. And suddenly, two years ago, three years ago, they started to tell all this, oh, you are the China of accident. Wow. And whatever it means, you are the China of accident, they say. And, 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 and it was true. It, it was true from the perspective that Mexico, I put it in this sense, become the, the workshop of, the, of, of the car industry. Every single firm was trying to get in Mexico, and it's until just a few months, they were trying to get in Mexico. Every single firm. And they say, when, when we talk, uh, they told me at one point, if uh, any single firm is ignoring Mexico, it's going to die. It's, they are out of that, you know, uh, of uh, competitive competition and the, the, the right way to doing things is being in Mexico. And suddenly we got this, right? The Mexican moment, it was uh, this uh, cover in time. This one is not, this is made, I don't know, for some Mexican artists, some, uh, um, yes, and um, yes, and safe in Mexico, slave in Mexico, right? Because it comes in the middle of this uh, funny and wonderful stuff. Uh, I just seen up at La Playa in, in, in a number of uh, oh, terrible things going on in Mexico that uh, nobody was able to explain. And 
even right now, how, how to make sense of this uh, crime and drug war in Mexico. And yes, uh, we were raised in a uh, trilateral trade. And you can see uh, 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 the, the Mexico-US trade compare in perspective with the uh, Canadian and uh, US trade also. So there are huge numbers. And, um, and yes, the car industry, this is the deficit of um, US with Mexico. 63 trillion, billion, sorry. And um, the car industry accounts for the total practically, the car industry. And keep in mind this regarding all the current situation uh, of uh, NAFTA. And um, I just put this to underscore another situation. I think personally that uh, uh, next to the situation of Mexico, what Trump is uh, dealing with, is, is discussing with, is the situation in the relationship with China. This is the, the deficit that accounts the most for uh, the US. Keep in mind this. And again, from the perspective of the car industry, uh, this is revealing. Uh, you can see Mexico uh, is uh, going up and progressing in the production uh, landscape, but Mexico is not in the sales scape, you see? Which exactly represents the opposite of the Brazilian case. And implies that Mexico, all in Mexico, is related to a sporting, it's a sporting platform, it's exporting to the US market, it's getting in the US market, So, in brief, if you ask for the sign of the time, this is the sign of the time. Uncertainty and all that you can uh, put in there. In the case of Mexico, it's NAFTA. Uh, I think personally that there is not, uh, NAFTA is not going to hold, it's not going to get into. Probably we can, they, can, they can come from with a, a different kind of arrangement, but uh, not uh, in, the, in the NAFTA terms. And uh, yeah, in the question that you can raise in, for, for the US, where, where the US is going, are quite important for Mexico. Where is Mexico going? It's related, depend uh, closely from uh, America. In the same situation, who is going to take office in Mexico? Who is going to take office in Brazil, right? Because uh, both got uh, uh, elections and are, are going to run office. It could be sooner in Brazil, depending on how they impeach uh, the Just yesterday, just yesterday, I was following the news and, and they, they um, uh, drop some charge in, in Temer, but they are another waiting for, there, there is a huge line, right? So, and um, there, I, there are many issues, uh, currency, depreciation, infrastructure. Uh, I need to travel a lot of, across Mexico, sometimes across Brazil. And, and uh, uh, in the regions that uh, the industry is going the most, and there are this kind of progress, you see this problem with the infrastructure? Just in um, um, losing flights and uh, uh, waiting, uh, and you see Chinese and Japanese people uh, just complaining and, because they are not able to, to, to comply with a commitment because of the infrastructure. So this is just one example. Okay, try to make sense. Try to make sense. Uh, this is the, what I call the, 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 the Giorgio economies. I have not done it, but um, yes, if you see, this is a long perspective, and I say we need to, to take this long view of our economies, because it's, it's not clear. It's, you can deceive, and you can, you can get wrong 
the wrong uh, impression and the wrong idea when you just take a picture, right? And um, look this perspective. This is in the OCD countries in the black line, and this is Mexico. And you can compare the same curves across the time, and you get, you get this idea that, that I try to compare. Uh, in the case of Mexico and Brazil, uh, uh, the, 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 the change uh, in the situations are quite radical. So this is the geo economics. We can get uh, up, uh, but there is not a uh, certainty that uh, tomorrow we will be able to to keep the situation. This is another perspective. You see, this is Latin America, and um, it's Asia, Europe, papa, pa, pa, and all the emerging economies worldwide, and we are the ones that uh, grows uh, less, and the ones that uh, stay behind every single goal. There is no time. We can talk about later on if you want it. Uh, I like him. Okay, uh, the fear um, the situation is uh, yes, um, social inequality and poverty. Look, this is all Latin America, and this is for the NAFTA era. I got to this uh, 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 table looking for the NAFTA era. During the NAFTA era, you can see Mexico. It, this is a GDP per capita, and growing the, the less, just, uh, just up uh, next to Venezuela and Guatemala. Kind of. And in the case of Brazil, it's double this amount, but it, even it's in the middle. And, and you see, who, who, Panama is, is in the up level. Do you know why? Do you know why Panama is in the upper level? Okay, they got something that they call laundry economy, right? Laundry economy, okay? Have you been in Panama or? Panama is a kind of, it's a kind, doesn't make sense in any respect in Central America, Panama. It's like putting something um, artificially implanted, something like that, right? I don't have time. Oh. Many indicators. And again, this is the Latin American con uh, context in Mexico. And what I'm trying to show up here is that uh, in terms of integration, economic and external integration, Mexico is doing great. But in terms of specific educational, social standard, it's lower than the rest of uh, uh, Latin America, and this is also for Brazil. It applies also for Brazil. And how do we explain, again, that the, our largest economy, the ones that drag and uh, attract uh, the rest of uh, um, our subregions are the ones that uh, are doing worse. And, uh, this is Mexico. This is more Mexico, right? If you want to 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 to, to watch that, that and get a sense, what is the car industry uh, doing in the last technologies? Go to Mexico, and then go to Tepito, right? This the, what I imply. We still got two different countries. And this applies also for Brazil. Our uh, social inequalities and, uh, are, complete, are, are extreme, right? And we keep reproducing these extreme situations. And spelling people from uh, abroad, right? This is uh, immigrants. During the NAFTA era, you can see, this is the result of the NAFTA era. Uh, Immigration, illegal immigration, just jumping incredible uh, during the NAFTA era. So, chronic capitalism. Do you know what is this? Okay, welcome to La Casa Blanca. This is uh, Peña Nieto. I don't have time. 
how is my camera going? Okay, okay, it's fantastic. Welcome to La Casa Blanca. This is Peña Nieto. No, no president in the whole world has uh, something uh, even close to the Casa Blanca, right? And uh, you know what is this? This is a dam. What it has to do? This is a, a, a private dam from one Mexican cover, cover, right? Uh, I mean, and this is in the desert in North Mexico. It's the complete desert. Water is a big issue. There are any kind of communities without a little drop of water. And these people is able to put uh, private dams in. And, uh, and, um, and they are still running office, I mean. Anything seems to happen. And um, when they, when they um, denounce publicly the situation, they blow up that dam, you know? It's incredible. Overnight, suddenly, the dam was uh, blow up. You say, oh, anything is wrong. Who knows it? Or who see or who watch it? That, uh, there is a dam here. There is not a dam at all. In Brazil, we need right now, I don't know, a complete clause to talk about uh, all this situation. Otherwise, what is otherwise? They bribe, uh, they, they are adding a country per day. The, the, the last account say they bribe about uh, 80 countries, 80 countries. And, um, and Petrobras. Just this is one example, right? For instance, Petrobras, uh, they bought this Astra firm, bought a refinery at this price, and it comes uh, Dilma. Dilma, it was when Dilma was the, the, um, the head of the um, Junta de Directores or Board of Directors, and, uh, and that is the, pro the main problem of Dilma. Right for the impeachment of Vilma. And, um, and at the end, they pay 1,000, 1,000 million for this one that Astra brought at 42 million, right? And Vandes. Vandes was, uh, was the, 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 the thing that the, the most important financial uh, box tool of Lula. Uh, Lula was able to, to we saw before, to, to steal consumption and, and um, put in movement the, the whole economy in, in the whole internal market, is a condition for credit and doing many things. And Bandes was an example for United Nations. And they say, you are to see Lula and you are to see how to, to, to handle the public uh, um, financial and money to um, uh, stimulate um, growth and everything. And there is a big corruption in Vandes. And we realize now that Vandes is, it, it, it has this budget even, is bigger than the World Bank, you see? So it's a huge amount of money. What I try to stress is that they move tons of money. Okay. My last question: Can um, industrial and labor institutions make a difference? Which is one question that you are going to deal with every time that you make this cross-national comparison. Where I say, I personally say, in order to make sex in social science, we need to do somehow cross-national comparison. And yes, the answer is they make all the sense. What I'm trying to, to show here that em em employment protection in our legislation is, is, really, is really high. We don't have problem with employment protection. You see, if you look the colors and what they represent, Mexico had higher low labor prote protection, right? 
In Brazil, is, it doesn't fare uh, quite bad. In, um, in terms of uh, in numerical terms, you see here, and you can compare Mexico uh, with the US, with Canada, and the, the labor protection that Mexico got is only compared with Germany. You see, the most uh, labor structure country in the world is the one that you can compare with Mexico, right? So if this is, uh, if this, is this work, it, uh, in, in, in the logic applies, they are going to have an impact in the social conditions and labor conditions. And the, 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 the truth is that they don't hold true in real conditions, right? Again, this is the Mexican auto industry, the most important industry in Mexico. And this is sour mean only wage, as yesterday. This is uh, the mean of wages in our most important industry. Do you know what this represents in terms of uh, international standard? It represents 95 less percent than the wages in America, than the wages in the medium in Europe, 95 percent less. In a context where this industry has been growing about six, seven percent per year, and productivity has been growing 8% per year. So it doesn't make any sense. There is not sense from the business cycle perspective. It doesn't make sense from a, 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 an economy perspective. It doesn't make sense from a political and uh, institutional perspective. Here is what I just mentioned, labor productivity and wages, completely, completely uh, in opposite directions. Conclude. What is next? This is a kind of uh, brief of uh, both countries in terms of uh, the institutions for labor and industrial relations. And, um, and yes, uh, Brazil has, and Professor Cook uh, made this assessment uh, I don't know, one decade ago or something, uh, you can correct me. But how under the, the left governments in South America, they were able to put more uh, uh, sectoral agreements and came to this uh, keep and strengthen somehow the institution of labor, right? And, um, and how this uh, impact uh, income and, and, and it was true, I mean, it was a fantastic uh, assessment on Professor Cook. But this, this is changing right now, you know? Mexico was moving in the opposite direction, was just moving in the opposite direction. Keep this in mind for our last conclusion. Brazil was strengthened and Mexico was weakening, collective bargaining and taking things to the firm level and plan level. In Mexico, you don't have any, even, you, we don't have agreements across firms right now. There are just, across any factory, we got different conditions. They are, in brief, they are able to do whatever they want to. And in, during the last few weeks and months, this is the labor reforms taking place, place in both countries. In Brazil, they are going to weaken and in, uh, in, uh, getting down all the, all the uh, gains that they, they, they did in the past. Whereas in the case of Mexico, the, 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 the thing that is, um, I would say promising, but important, is that they are trying to disappear this Juntas de Conciliación. What is this? Why is this important in the Mexican context? Because in Mexico, we don't get uh, collective bargaining, as we know it. We, we got contratos de protección, protection contracts, which means that protection contracts are contracts that uh, corrupted labor unions, uh, 
uh, a trade with uh, management, corrupt management, I would say, and they put money and they sign whatever uh, management please. And, uh, and this is, uh, this is uh, uh, back, but uh, this local juntas de conciliación. It's a huge tunnel of uh, corruption and bribery and um, underwater um, agreements, uh, whatever you want to call it. So, I'm finishing. Brazil, after two decades, is taking the streets again, right? They took the streets uh, during April, Isabel, and June, right? It was this two huge uh, uh, general strike after two decades. And um, in Mexico, there is, there is not uh, anything uh, like this. And the question is, um, they will be able to revert in uh, the situation? Thank you. I open your to your question and thank you for your time and passion.